Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. Now my last video called His Church is Disturbing, I mentioned how any channel like mine that tries to make a video about these two gets heavily suppressed. So, in order to get the truth out there, I will be referring to her as Kamila. Now, if you haven't seen this video yet, go check it out. I talk about how Timmy's church is, well, extremely disturbing. It'll blow your mind what he's a part of and claims to be a Christian. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you who Kamila's pastor is. Now, I know it sounds like a joke, thinking of Kamila having a pastor that is supposedly a Christian, the most radical anti-God, progressive, liberal politician calling her pastor and asking for prayer. It sounds like this is the epitome of an oxymoron. And hey, real quick, if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know when you like this video, you're not agreeing with the insanity, but you're helping push this video out to more people to help spread the truth. In fact, Kamila's pastor isn't like a pastor she used to have like 20, 30 years ago. It is still her pastor today. Actually, check this out. Kamila called her pastor on night of presidential run. So this is when they installed her. She called and said, hooray, I've been installed. Look at this. Vice President Kamila reached out to her longtime pastor, the Reverend Amos C. Brown. Amos C. Brown. Huh? More on him in just a second. Following President Joe's announcement of not seeking re-election. Oh, you mean the totally legit announcement that was totally written by him and him alone with the signature that looks unlike any signature that he's ever signatured before? According to reports, which say she requested the pastor to pray for her presidential run. I wonder if she asked him to pray that God wouldn't pour his wrath over her. After the service at the Third Baptist Church of San Francisco last Sunday. Third Baptist Church of San Francisco. Huh? Now here's the Third Baptist Church of San Francisco website. Again, like a lot of churches like this, and like I showed about Timmy's church in my last video, there's nothing on this website that talks about what they actually believe. But when you click on their pastor, you can see that it is Reverend Amos C. Brown. Now he is described as known among world leaders, presidents, celebrities, and academ academicians. I'm one of those. <laughs> academicians alike for his trademark activism, intellectual discipline, and masterful oratory. Dr. Amos C. Brown has been the pastor of Third Baptist Church of San Francisco since 1976. At TBC, we find him to be a shepherd who takes seriously his responsibility to protect the sheep from predators, whether elected government officials, public analysts, or religious leaders, who would misguide, mislead, or misfeed his flock. Now, it's interesting that they talk about misleading the flock. If you remember back in 2008, there was all this hoopla about Proposition 8. In fact, there was a Bay Area demonstration to condemn Prop 8, of course. It was a rally for marriage equality. Here you can see a picture of Reverend Amos Brown. As this says, Amos Brown drew the loudest response from the thousands of demonstrators attending a rally at City Hall to protest Prop 8. In fact, here's a video of Amos speaking at that rally in San Francisco back in 2008. I am here because as a faith leader, though I am a heterosexual, and though for historical reasons, in my particular faith tradition, we do not perform same marriages. But I say to you, as one of the native state of Mississippi, though I am a Baptist, I refuse to be a bigot. Now, there's lots of clips like this that you can find of Brown talking about his support for the LGB. But this was during a pivotal point in time when marriage was being redefined. You can see that Brown talks about 
because of the history of the particular faith tradition that he has, they haven't done LGB marriages. But he wants that to change and he refuses to be a Baptist that is a bigot. In fact, not only does Brown think that Christians who hold a biblical perspective on marriage and just believe what the Bible says about sexuality. He's also an extremely radical progressive in every single area. I mean, it's uh, he's about as radical as you can get. And, you know, gee, I, I wonder where Kamila gets it. You know, Kamila is extremely radical. I showed in another video what they won't tell you about her I showed you how she is literally ranked the most liberal, progressive politician in the entire government. She is extremely radical in all of her positions. But there was an interview that Brown did with the San Francisco Chronicle. It says, civil rights champion Brown, San Francisco has been living a lie. In this article, you can read just how radical and progressive Brown is. But one spot stood out to me here. He says down here, one of the answers he gave, he said the Bay Area and specifically San Francisco has been living a lie. The city does not deserve the brand and image that it has of being liberal and progressive. So this gives you an idea of the way that Brown thinks, of the way that Kamila thinks. Even San Francisco isn't progressive, isn't liberal enough for these people. And San Francisco is one of the worst cesspools of depravity in the United States of America. It is a horrid place. In fact, the last time I was there, it was just a couple of years ago, it was disgusting. The streets were absolutely disgusting. Most of the places that you would have enjoyed going to when you were younger, like when I was a kid and I would go to San Francisco to visit because I grew up in California, there were lots of different landmarks, different places, restaurants, and just fun places to visit that were either shut down, taken over, or just so like dangerous to go to anymore that it made San Francisco not fun at all. In fact, we got out of San Francisco as fast as we could. San Francisco is a sanctuary state for everything depraved under the sun. In fact, if you want to see the left at its worst, then visit San Francisco. Brown is also a pastor on the Reparations Task Force. Hopes California will make amends for race. Acts. So here's Brown. Again, he's a part of the California Reparations Task Force. In fact, in 2020, California became the first state in the nation to set up Reparation Task Force. And much of what is done here could be the model for the rest of the country. Remember that if someone like Kamila becomes president, not only is she going to implement the most radical, progressive, leftist, ideas into America, but you're going to get these things spread throughout the nation. It's not just going to be California and New York and Minnesota anymore. It's going to be your state as well. You know what Brown and and Kamila are doing are they're mocking God is, is what they're doing. And these are the kind of things that bring on the wrath of God. You know, the Bible talks about how God will not be mocked. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3. Listen to this. It perfectly encapsulates what we're seeing here. It says, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I want you to notice something. All of the terms that is used here for love is the opposite of true 
love. In fact, it's talking about how they essentially twist and contort love to be something that is only for themselves and that is for money and that is not for good. And they would rather love pleasure rather than love God. So when they warp and they twist love in this way and then claim to be the harbingers of true love, true morality, true purity, yet everything they are doing is directly uh, against the word of God. In fact, it is an attack on God. It is an attack on truth. And it is an attack on love. Yet look what it goes on to say. They have the appearance of godliness, but they deny its power. Avoid such people. These people come as an angel of light, just like the Bible says that Satan does. The Bible says Satan comes as an angel of light. He's not red and carrying a pitchfork and snarling and growling. He comes as an imposter, someone who claims to have the moral superiority, to have the answer of what true love really is. But it's twisted. It's fake. And it only leads to death and destruction. But there is hope. God is in complete control. These people do not win in the end. They might have their rewards that they're gaining in this moment, in this life, that will perish with them, unfortunately, if they do not come to repentance in Jesus Christ and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But the Bible says that God wins in the end. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, Join this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you wouldn't mind as well hitting that thumbs up button, you know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.